what is our markdown? Why do we need it? What do we do with it? The best way to do is show it. Here, for instance, is a class project. It could be a report you are sharing with your colleagues all over the country, or it could be something you want to present in front of your colleagues at work. I just chose a class project. So the professor has given you, for instance, things. Let's say an R. Create a normally distributed data set. Do some work with it. Read an Excel file data and perform a t-test. Do some hypothesis testing and so on and so forth. What she wants is all of this should be in one single file, maybe PDF file or HTML file. And you have to show all the R codes, all the graphics and all the outputs all in one file. Normally, you'd be doing a bunch of things, running one R program, cutting and pasting from there, another R program, cutting and pasting from there. If something changes, you do the cutting and pasting all over again. Not with R Markdown. Now, here, for instance, the report that we are going to do from scratch uh, when we uh, go to our studio. This was all done in R Markdown in one single file. So here's the first assignment, generate normal distribution data set and draw histograms and box plots. Here's the data set. Here's our program. Here's histogram. Here is your uh, more information box plot. Then number two, which is read an Excel file and perform t-tests and so on and so forth. And here's our program. You're reading an Excel file here. And then you have some outputs and some more outputs and your final conclusion, whatever that is, the p-values and everything out there. So all was done, all of this was done in one single file. So what else? Well, think of this way. In this report, for instance, you're reading from an Excel file. Imagine this is an Excel file from, from work, some sales numbers. They change all the time. Every day they're changing, every minute they're changing. You don't want to, again, cut and paste and copy each time the numbers change. Instead, whatever changes they have, it will come straight into this file and everything will change. Your graphs will change, everything will change, just like that. So there are lots and lots of good things. Also, also, you can output to, for instance, a Word file, a PDF file, or HTML file. Or you can combine different programming languages in one place, like R, Python, etc. And you can also have lots of options. You don't have to display the code if you don't want to. Anyway. So let's go to our R Studio. We are going to install these packages. And once you install them, you're ready to go for R Markdown. So here I'm in R Studio. We're going to start a new program. Let's say file and new file R script. And then I'm going to simply going to paste those uh, program that we're going to have, run them. Four packages. You run them, like for instance, just go there, run it. It takes some time, so they'll run it. Then run the next one, the next one, the next one. Once we're done with it, we are finished with this thing. We don't need to install packages anymore after this one. Then we are ready for the R Markdown. So for that, we again go to File and go to New File and R Markdown right there. You can name it, let's say, my first project and my name is there which is fine and we can suppose do a word a pdf file let's do pdf file we can change even afterwards too and okay and this it generates my first project etc etc and for instance this is simple instructions we don't need any of this stuff so i'm just going to delete all of it including this portion here so delete all of it, done. So now we're going to insert an R code. Let's just write something there, okay? So we are going to do some R programming. And you can also do bold and italics and all that, which we're going to see in a minute. So now to put our first R code, we can just simply go there and click R and this creates R. Or you can type it in. This is a back tick. 
which is uh, on the left hand corner of keyboard the very top one of those ones there now kaise pa you can create a vector v1 the programming is done i am done okay so this is it the program is within this r chunk they call it in in this range now we're going to run it but running that we're more like knitting it knitting everything together like you do a sweater so right this one or you can do control shift k click on it and it's going to start giving the output file there we are my first project we're going to do some r programming this is the uh code and is a histogram and i'm done this is it that's how simple it is that's how easy it is so here is our file i already have done programming everything to save time but we're going to go over it every step of it okay so this is we can do for instance uh, i'm i'm showing you here this can be like a, a bullets like numbered bullets itemized we're going to learn some basic stuff there and then you know the idea is to show what it can be done don't worry about what i've sent here a new line now we'll insert r codes a new line so this r code once again we have these ones these three of these uh back ticks then in curly bracket r you don't need to put this one i can delete actually if i want to no need really need for that uh there and then the program that you write and you can copy and paste from any r program really is copy and paste from anything where you want to do it now here we get the normal distribution random numbers 50 one of them mean 40 sigma 8 then we round them to zero the symbol that means become they become integer we do a cat that means you print out data set with a space in between and we'll see the final output of all of this stuff and we do a histogram here and these are our comments now we can do inline code inline code basically means for instance if i want to find the mean of then this number i can simply do the back tick r for our language then round it mean data 1 to one decimal point so this will give me a mean of one decimal point right they're all in one shot here in inline code we can also do summary of the data set now when i put echo equal to false that basically means that the r code will not print I don't want our code here. I just simply want this one. So now, once again, I'm doing the same thing. I'm putting uh, these tick marks. Oh, I should be three tick marks there. R echo equal to false. That means no R code will be typed. Summary of the data one. Remember, even though we're out of this R code, it still remembers everything unless we do the remove memory command. Okay. and then we come up here and put a box plot again outside the r code this is the main r code we are doing outside it once again three back ticks r echo equal to false box plot data 1 and there and this is it our first programming is done now we go to the second program in this we are going to read an excel file okay now here we are going to remove everything from the memory which means everything we did up here will be all gone now no good we set a default directory to where my files are and that's the default directory now so i can read anything anything i read or write will go to now this place I install library read excel now this will give me warning message okay normally they give you warning messages so what i can do is i can for instance come here and simply say w a r n i n g equal to f a l s e false now warnings will be disappeared now the won't get any more warnings and now we have we read the excel file here we read from income sheet is income because excel can be many many worksheets we're looking for income worksheet and this is basically male versus female paychecks we are seeing if they are equal now we attach data to attaching what attaching does really is if you don't attach it you always have to refer using a dollar sign for instance to to refer age you will be doing this data to dollar age 
if you don't attach it. Otherwise, I can simply use age, like for instance, sex, etc. Or we can use directly. Do we perform a t test? I just call it t test one here. So the t test is a equal variance test and two sided. And detach now. Attach is all gone. Always should do detach after you do attach. Now we got a new page. Now here we have some more information. We can do a data summary. Again, echo equal to false. So no, no uh, R codes. We can do hypothesis testing output. Our alpha was 0.05. And once again, we put in these uh, three, uh, these back ticks and R and test one. And I can again put here equal to false. And now we're going to do a line. This is straight line. Three of these will give you a straight line divider. And now we're doing basically uh, bullets. When you put a one asterisk it's bullets and we'll see the final output, then we'll see. And two of these ones will make it bold. So this becomes bold. So what I'm doing is like once again, it's inline code. I put uh, this back tick, then R, then round, that means round to four decimal places and test one dollar P dot value. So this will give me the P value, which you already have seen uh, in output somewhere here. Four decimal places and bold off. And our final conclusion is here. Once again, another R code there, echo equal to false. We are equating PV to the P value. If the P value is more than 5.05, .05, we again make a statement with the cat command. There is no evidence of differences between male and female uh, incomes or wages, whatever. If it's 0 0.505 .05 or less, there are differences. And we are done. And this is it. All done. Now I'm going to go up there and again knit my program here, knit it, and it give me a word file. Here's a word file, all done. Now let's we'll see what we're doing. Our purpose to learn about our markdown, we will. Now see here, one, two, three, one, two. Although I, I want to show you that one, that's what it is. Insert the R code, are these commands? Are there comments which could remove if you want to the word file? This is our code, the whole code, plot histogram. Here is the data set output, all 51 numbers, separated by space, right there. Data set, space, uh, separated by a space, right there, space. Then our histogram. Now, see, we notice here, I said echo equal to off, which means it did not print histogram thing. It simply print, gave me the graph. And now this is a picture thing. You can copy and put your PPTs if you're putting PPTs right there, all of them. This is summary. Again, I'd say echo equal to false. So no code is printed. This is our summary of the whole thing. And now we go to, uh, here's the box plot again, outside the R code and we also give echo equal to false. So there is no, uh, no R code here about this one. It's simply there. And then now we'll start a new program. We will read from Excel file. Now here's again the R code. And now he again more output, data summary we wanted with a no echo. So here's a data summary. Hypothesis testing that we did it, put in the T, uh, uh, R command, that one. And now here are the bullets. The P value in bold, 0 0.0434, which means less than 5%. The confidence interval does not include zero. So our final conclusion, again in bold, there are differences between male and female incomes. And italics, we are done. And this is it. Now if your data file changes, run it again, you get different reports. So honestly speaking, it's one of the best things you can do with R and other things also. You can write a whole book on using R markdown. People, have, people do that also, if they're using, especially using R and all that. So my presentation ends right here and hopefully you liked it.